Hello, hello, party people. Welcome back to day four of the Course Creators Challenge. Almost said the Course Creators Blueprint there. Course Creators Challenge. It is day four, and we've got a very, very, very special guest coming up with us very soon. Uh, but before we get there, a couple of things. I want to just get a bit of a heads up, make sure this is all working. So if you can see my lovely dial and hear my dulcet tones and everything's working, then please just tell me which country are you in? I'd like to uh, get a bit of a who's who in the room. Which country are you in? I'm also just going to dive on over to ye old the Facebook here and make sure that we're actually live. Um, Mm, boom, ba, boom, that was yesterday. Uh, okay, so there's about a 20 second delay. Here we go. Yay! We are live. There we go. Uh, there's about a 20 second delay between what we do here in the studio and what we see there on the interwebs. So uh, bear with us there. Um, and do, 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 there we go. We're live. Lovely. All right. So, bit of housekeeping. Who, where are you from? Angie Neal is from Australia. Angie Neal is from Bris Vegas in Australia. Jennifer Franklin is here with what looks like a Stars and Stripes flag, which means she is from the US of A. There we go. Maine Castillo is here from headquarters. Oh, there we go. I just brought uh, Jennifer up again. Maine Castillo, because the comments are moving too quickly. Maine Castillo is here from Philippines headquarters. That's right. Maine is uh, in charge of our customer support in our uh, office in Manila. So there you go. Maine is joining in. And by the way, it's 7 a.m. in the Philippines right now. That's how committed Maine is to the cause. Sheila Hurd is here from Canada. Hey, Sheila, how you doing? Kelvin is here. All good from Australia. Thanks, Kelvin. Robert Mecklen is here from the USA. Uh, Yogesh is here from India, where it is like, what is it, 4 a.m., dude? 5 a.m.? You're crazy, Yogesh. No, you're not. You're committed to the cause, and I love it. Amy Hall is here from uh, San Diego in California in the USA. Nick Kublin is here from Brisbane, Australia. Fantastic, Nick. How are you going up there, mate? I heard a rumour that you're allowed to go to the pub up there and have a beer, you bastard. We're not allowed to leave the house at the moment here in Melbourne, but that all changes next week. I'm looking forward to getting out and about as the restrictions relax a little bit. Nick Chapman is here from Pattaya in Thailand. Hey, Nick. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Um it's 4.30 in India where Yogesh is. So there you go. Uh, awesome. And the other thing I wanted to do was just give a huge shout out to Angie Neal, who is absolutely crushing it right now. Uh, I'm just in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Looks like another sale in came overnight. So she has she is well and truly validating her course offer. Uh, remember, the challenge was to get 10 people to put their hand up and say that they were interested in the course. She's managed to sell to already, which is a fantastic effort. Tina Hughes has also got a whole bunch of people opted in for her course. There's just been a flurry of activity, and I made a promise to myself this week that I was going to use the word flurry at least once. So there we, there we go. I've, I've, uh, I've ticked that off. There's been a flurry of activity uh, in, in the group and amongst you guys doing the challenge, which has just been awesome to see. It makes it all worthwhile. And, uh, Jonathan Holborn says free Victoria. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? I'm actually quite happy that we're in lockdown right now because we've almost knocked this thing on the head here in Australia. We are very close to just having it completely done for now. So that I'm happy just to stay here for another few days. Um, all right, cool, cool. So just a little recap for those of you who might just be tuning in for the first time and wondering what the hell this is all about. I just do want to give you a uh, quick little recap here. Remember, we are giving away an iPad Pro this week with an Apple Pencil to the most engaged course creator of the week. And there's a few people in the running for that. So it's all going to depend on what happens in the next 24 hours. Remember, you have to be here tomorrow to receive your prize. That's right. It's like a meat raffle at the pub. If they pull your number out of the hat and you've gone home or passed out in the toilet somewhere and you don't answer the call, then they give the chook to someone else. That's the way it's going to work here as well, okay? So you have to be here tomorrow to accept the prize. Now, why are we here? Indeed, we are here because the online education industry is expected to be worth a whopping $325 gazillion dollars in the year 2025, online courses are infinitely scalable because you make them once and sell them as many times as you like. And the gratitude you get from your students is absolutely addictive. 
uh, and has been a, an absolute game changer for me and our business. Some of the great influencers in this space doing great work. Marie Forleo, of course, from B-School. Amy Porterfield these days, I think, has about 8,000 courses for sale on her website. Uh, good old Pat Flynn, of course, from the Smart Passive Income podcast, has a bunch of courses. Uh, Dana Mallstaff, who I fantastic i got away with using that image and she hasn't hasn't seen it yet brendan bashard first course i ever bought was from that man and it completely changed my life the one and only dave foy from uh our our high ticket sales funnel course and no stress wordpress and no fear funnels kim barrett from the facebook ads accelerator course and of course christina romero who started out here at wp elevation and has gone on to launch her own course business to the point where she just sold her agency because she's going all in on the online courses and the coaching model, which is awesome. So, uh, and just a little more pre-framing, if you like, why I think you should be doing this right now and not waiting is because internet usage is up by over 70% this year because of the pandemic. Uh, Ad costs have plummeted, which basically means it's easier to get in front of a captive audience because marketing is less competitive because of the pandemic. And it's your time to get paid for your expertise because of the pandemic. People are desperately looking for someone to give them a plan and give them something positive to focus on for the next, you know, 30 days, 90 days, five years, whatever their game plan is. And you and your course are that person and that plan. Okay, so I think the timing is absolutely perfect. I'm not going to bore you with the details of my story. We've already been through that this week. Uh, needless to say, I've made a crap ton of mistakes and it's cost me probably a house, if I'm honest. Like the, 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 the number of mistakes that I've made over the last 10 years, I could have easily bought another house if this information and training was available to me when I started out or if I was ready for it or if I'd taken action uh, back then. And if I hadn't made all the mistakes, I seriously could have bought another house, probably another few houses actually, in the last uh, 10 years. But I, I haven't. I've squandered my efforts. And that's what I'm here to help you guys not do. I want you guys to succeed and I don't want you to waste any time building something somebody doesn't want. So having said all of that, it is my absolute great pleasure to bring onto the live stream with me one of my good, good friends who I had the great privilege of meeting last year when I was out in the UK. We collaborated on a course together and we hung out. And I've got to tell you, not only is this guy super smart, and extremely, extremely good looking and fit for his age. It just is a, a, a thing to um, to admire. And I'm a little bit envious of him, but I'm going to get those secrets out of him. I know that bone broth has something to do with it, but I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. Of course, the one and only Dave Foy. Dave Foy, how are you, my friend? Boom. Are you gorgeous? <laughs> how are you, sweetheart? <laughs> I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I'm not too bad. I've moisturized, um, you know. Fantastic. What are you? What are you I'm, using these days? Bit of bit I'm of L'Oreal right. in here. <laughs> I'm not telling you my secrets, mate. I'm not telling <laughs> you my secrets. Damn! I thought that's why you were here. <laughs> hey, for, those, for those that have no idea who you are, by the way, it's what is it? It's just after midnight where you are, right? It is. Yeah, ten past what? ten past midnight. What yeah, it's, the, it's part of the beauty sleep that gets this. Right. So I was going to say, um, what, like, what are you still doing out of bed? I'm missing out. <laughs> <laughs> I actually half considered doing this in bed. I was going to get one of those kind of wee willy winky nightcap things and uh, the whole thing, and just sit up in bed. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Decided against um, it. For those that don't know and have been living under a rock, who are you, what do you do, and why are you here? Hello, my name is Dave. My friend Troy told me to turn up. And, um, yes, I, I have been making uh, online courses for the past three and a half years now, nearly four years. And, um, yeah, I, I've, I've been making courses, helping web designers make better websites faster and more profitably. And, um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I mean, I, I, you, I you probably know the story, but I transitioned from, you know, b b being a, uh, a web designer building websites for clients. And um, yeah, I kind of moved into an online education model, went for it full time, and uh, it's the absolute best thing I ever did. Just amazing. What, 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 was the, what was the impetus for, like what was it about, what, why the transition from doing client services into online education? Well, partly because I, I, I felt like, um, I felt like I wanted to, package up 
the knowledge and help people that I'd been helping already. I'd spent the last 16 years actually helping designers at the time um, realize their designs on the web. And I, I kind of just, mm. one of the big drivers was just wanting to stop trading my time for money quite so much mm. and package up that knowledge and resell it and, and just get more freedom, have more options. Um, and I mean, I, I was also a teacher as well. So, mm. you know, I came, I came, I came originally from a teaching background before I went into web design. I, I was a teacher for 10 years mm. and, um, it's kind of that buzz of teaching as well. You know, that mm. buzz of helping people transform, um, was just something I just missed desperately. So, uh, yeah, it was a, I, I threw all the chips in the air, you know, almost burned all the bridges and just went straight for it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the best really, thing I ever did. It's a really interesting mindset, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I've learned over the years, I'm definitely a burn the ships kind of guy, right? I'm, I'm like, for those that don't know, the old parable is that, you know, the, 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 I'm going to paraphrase and completely screw this up, but you know, the, the Navy Lieutenant turns up on the Island with all of his troops and they get out and they, they get out onto, onto the Island and, or onto the beach and and they burn the ships, the Navy burns the ships and he says to his troops, well, we have to win now because we can't retreat. So there is no plan B. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Completely, completely bastardised that story. But I'm definitely <laughs> a burn the ships kind of guy. Like there is no plan B here. This has to work because there isn't yeah. otherwise – I mean, I mean, there, there, there's, there's no other option, right? And when, and for the way my brain works, and this is not for everyone, by the way, right? But the way my brain works is, if there is no other option, then you just have to figure out how to swim. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not something I would recommend to everyone. I mean, if I put my sensible hat on, you know, I would tell people to kind of start a little side thing to to start off with, and you know, gradually, gradually build a business alongside um a, a web design or a, or a client services business definitely and there's nothing to say that you can't build an online course an online training business and mm. also mm. do the client work as well you know it's not it doesn't have to be an either or and in fact doing the having an online course just elevates your positioning as a client services provider anyway so you generally put yeah. your fees up and get paid a premium because if you can't afford me to do it for you then just go and do my course and mm. learn how to do it yourself and it's kind of like having written the book. Well, the guy wrote the course on No yeah. Fear Funnel, so he must be the guy. Yeah, um, yeah, that was definitely the thing. I was, I mean, we'll probably come on to the whole imposter syndrome thing, but yeah, you know, the imposter syndrome thing of, well, I'm not an expert. Mm. What, 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 why, you know, who am I to to be teaching people to do whatever it is that you want to teach them to do? Mm. But the fact is, is that when you make the course and become known for that particular expertise, you become the expert. You become mm. the people that, that pe you know, the, the person that people look up to. Mm. Um, I, want to, I do want to talk about imposter syndrome because not only, so, so just a little bit of context, Dave teaches the two main courses you're known for, No Fear Funnels and No Stress WordPress, right? Uh -huh. no, no Stress WordPress was your first course, then No Fear Funnels. And right. you're also co-creator of the High Ticket Sales Funnels course over at WP Elevation with me. And we had a fabulous time in, in, uh, in we London. We did. Oh, that was great. I, I man, I, I just, I'm coming back at some point. Once the we zombie should. apocalypse is over, I'm coming back and we'll do something else for sure. We should. It was so much fun, man. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 not only the imposter syndrome about, well, who am I, you know, am I, you know, who am I to teach this, but a large, one could argue, Dave, that a large portion of what you actually teach, because it's technical stuff around how to do things in WordPress, like I could say to you, well, Dave, why would I buy your course when I can just go to YouTube and, and search around and find that stuff for free on YouTube? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that that was was certainly something that went through my mind. I mean, a, a lot, along with, you know, the whole general imposter syndrome thing. But, but yeah, a lot of people... A lot of people ask me about that, actually. There are lots and lots of reasons why that is just not an argument at all. I mean, one, the, the YouTube videos that are out there are quite fragmented. Um, they're often just little one-offs, which teach people just one specific how to do this thing, how to do another thing. Um, due to the nature of tech, they're often out of date, but the people who are searching YouTube have no real idea whether the, the thing is relevant or not anymore. Um, I'd say mo more often than not, they are out of date. Um, 
the lot of a lot of YouTube tech tutorials, in my opinion, that are out there are actually not very good. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it's it, uh, it's not that you need a teaching qualification. It's not that you need to be an expert teacher. But I think so many people who make tech tutorials on YouTube haven't really thought about the needs of their audience, you know, which is one of the things about making and selling courses as well. They don't go the extra mile. They don't explain why the audience needs, actually needs to know this. Um, no kind of empathy with the position that the, the um, you know, the, the viewer is in. You know, teaching isn't just showing somebody what to click on the screen. But I'd say the biggest thing is that it's fine having these fragmented little videos, a little one here, something else here, something there, but it is not step by step. So mm -hmm. when people buy a course, what they're paying for is a transformation, right? So they're, they're here and they want to be over here mm -hmm. um, and they want the shortcut. So the, the, the pain for the shortcut from A to B or A to Z or whatever you, whatever you want to call it. And random little YouTube videos are just not the, look, let's, let's, you, you don't need to know that. You don't need to know that. This is exactly what to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, the other thing I, I often say to people who say, well, I could probably get all that on YouTube. My, my answer is often, how has that worked out for you so far? <laughs> it's like, why are you here? <laughs> That's right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, so, you rang me, remember you called me. Exactly. So why, yeah. Um, you visited my website. So why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> but I think also people will buy a course because of, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of your favorite topics. I know is positioning, yeah. you know, so it's actually positioning. I mean, I could say, well, I sell courses helping people how to use WordPress. Okay. Mm. Which is, which is just a feature. Mm. Um, but in, in your selling of that course throughout the, the sales page and the whole kind of launch process, you know, it's actually relatively straightforward when you know how to sell the actual benefits mm -hmm. to 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 the to, you know to the potential student the the mm -hmm. specific transformation that they're going to get mm -hmm. um you know for, i mean for me for example i just knew that my target audience were wasting tons of time mm -hmm. uh, they were not profitable mm -hmm. they were deeply frustrated <laughs> by mm -hmm. trying to figure out all these kind of issues which were um ruining their profitability and sanity but if you get kind of get deep down into it as well, it's actually probably an element of status as well, you know, of mm -hmm. kind of feeling like a fraud in front of clients and in front of colleagues um, because of not having a roadmap, not having those those um, shortcuts. So um, all the things that a course provides that YouTube videos, you mm -hmm. know, can can could, could never provide in a million mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I remember first seeing your videos when I, when I, uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, but I remember like your videos coming up on my YouTube feed and my first, <laughs> and I'm, we've had this conversation, so I know I can we tell have. you, my, my first response was, who the bloody hell is this Dave Foy bloke thinking he is? What the, it's got that bloody smooth, like late night radio voice and the beautiful camera and the blurry background. Who does he bloody think he is? <laughs> and, uh, so I, re I resisted watching your video. I kept seeing your thumbnails going, piss off, piss off, get in your own lane. And I remember, and then I remember watching one of the videos going, wow, actually, this guy's really good and I really like him. And I had to kind of admit that it was my own ego getting in the way. Um, <laughs> but you also, <clears throat> you also, I think, when I, because the thing that, the thing that, what, what the point I'm trying to make is what occurred to me about your videos was you were just, you were like, uh, a mile above all of the other YouTube videos that I'd seen around how to do shit in WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew when I, and I think this was my resistance when I first discovered you, I knew that you were going all in because you don't, like your stuff was scripted, it was beautifully edited, like you don't do that unless you've got a play in mind and you weren't just like a YouTuber with a USB microphone just, you know, clicking around the screen. I'm like, hey, what's going on here? I've got to keep an eye on this guy. And I did, and eventually we partnered up. So keep your enemies close and keep, <laughs> keep your friends close. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> I do think, I do think, uh, th th yeah, the, the, the going all in thing is, is, is important because it just, I think it just permeates everything that you do. You know, you've got that strong sense of why, I suppose, driving what you're doing. It just permeates everything. But I do think that so many people producing tutorials and courses of all kinds could be infinitely better by just going the extra mile. So mm -hmm. take the tutorial that you were going to produce and mm -hmm. think just how can I, you know, a bit like peeling the onion or just mm -hmm. going that extra layer deeper, you know, hang on a minute. How, how can I make this, you know, what extra mile could I go in terms of detail or examples or practical application or um, it's not about being slick. It's not about having the best camera, the best lights, the best anything. It's more about the effort that, you've clearly mm. gone into to to help your target audience. I think it really comes through. Yeah. There's a great book called uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And, yeah. Yeah, which is a – which is a. I, mean, I read it in Thailand, actually, literally laying in a hammock for like a week at this uh, this wellness centre. Oh, God, I sound like a hippie, don't I? In um, – <clears throat> in uh, – <laughs> Uh, where was it? Uh, it? It's called the Sanctuary, actually, and it's just a, it's a little remote beach in Koh Phang Yen. And no, I didn't go to a half moon party. It was one there while I was there, and I couldn't think of anything worse. Anyway, I was laying in a hammock in this wellness center, sipping some kind of you know weird organic lemon drink, drinking, uh, reading the Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And the thing that struck me with that book is like one of the big messages that I got out of that book is that quality is something that is difficult to quantify. Right. You, like it's yes. it's hard to go, well, you know, this like I'm looking at a beautiful camera here at the moment. It's a Canon C one hundred, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful camera. It's really expensive, but it's a beautiful camera. I I I can't tell you why that's better quality than something that's cheaper. I just know that it is. And mm -hmm. one of the messages I got out of that book is that the amount of care that is taken with producing something is generally reflected in the quality of the product mm -hmm. and it's it's an intangible it's an intangible thing that is hard to define but you can just tell when there's been a lot of care taken in the production of something yeah but i also think as well that there's got to be a balance and i've i've suffered with this a lot really because <laughs> i think i think sometimes people who 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 insist on absolute top quality you know we're mm. talking perfectionists i mean mm. that is often you know a symptom of some kind of fear actually of yeah. putting something out and not just shipping the thing mm -hmm. so i think there's there's something that i've had to work on for many years now is that balance of you know going the extra mile not just settling for just clicking around the screen and just hoping that that'll be enough um making sure that everything i do is 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 something that people will actually look forward to and go wow that guy pushed the boat out but also not taking six weeks to mm. make the video as well and there's a yeah. there's a balance and it's actually something i learned from i, I learned a lot from you amongst mm. hundreds of other things last year was how to do that you know how do you have top quality production mm. um and a, an amazing process and you know, the whole process of the course, um, screaming quality and usefulness and mm. transformation, but not taking years to, mm. to, to make it. Mm. Um, and I think it's one of those things that comes with practice. Definitely. And and by the way, this is the complete opposite of what you're going to learn in the Course Creators Blueprint because I'm just going to teach you to throw a bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks before you do anything. <laughs> so, um, but I think there is an argument for – there is an argument for – for so we go all in on quality now because we've proven the concept and yeah. we know that we're not this is the this is the key message that i'm um really preaching at the moment is uh when, when i when i first started out in this business i'd read the lean startup book right and i'm like well we're not a software mm. company so how does this apply and i was familiar with lean manufacturing and just in time inventory and all those concepts that came out of the japanese manufacturing scene and I actually read a book called Running Lean by Ash Moriah. And Running Lean was the practical application of the lean startup methodology for small business. And I read the book. And part of the deal was you could you could get coaching from the author of the book on Skype. And it was like $197, right? And I'm like, okay. So I, I bought, I thought it was just one session. 
And he's like, no, I'm happy to, like, you can Skype me anytime and I'll jump on a quick call and, and let you go. And I'm like, really? And he's like, he he was basically, I didn't realise it at the time, but he was road testing his own methodology on real small businesses. And that's why he was doing it so cheaply. Yeah. So we had a couple of calls with Ash and he really got me thinking about what, and so the core message really was, what's the quickest experiment you can run to prove a hypothesis with yeah. the least amount of work. And it's not about being lazy. It's about reducing the waste before you get. So it's like, well, I think if I mix blue and yellow, I'm going to get green, right? So I, I think there's this thing called secondary colors. So let's just mix a bit of blue and yellow and we have green. Okay, great. So now there's a thing called a secondary color. Now let's go and get the other primary colors and mix them. Whereas, you know, the traditional approach might be, I think there's a thing called secondary colours, so let's get all of the primary colours together and lay them out on the canvas and start mixing them all up. Well, no, you just got to mix two. You just got to get blue and yellow, mix them and see what happens. That's yeah, the yeah. quickest experiment you can run and you don't even need a science lab to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> once we'd proven the hypothesis and proven the concept, then we go all in and raise the quality of the product that we deliver. But there's no point doing that it, because I've done that and nobody bought it. Well, actually, five people bought it. And that's just a waste of time and effort and can be super damaging to your confidence. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially, I mean, with courses, because uh, even the quickest, you know, fastest course that you could make is still going to take some time, some money. It's going to mm -hmm. take you away from doing other things as well that you could be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I mean, I would, I would agree 100%. It's actually something that I learned from the beginning, even before I started making courses, I absolutely mm. knew you do not make a course and then try and sell it. No. Like, no. <laughs> no. Prove the concept as fast as you possibly, possibly can and learn, yeah. you know, um, if it fails, what have you learned? Yeah. Go again, you know. Yep. And if it fails, you've just like Nick Cree, who's in our in our group, he uh, he ran an experiment. So on Monday, I gave the guys an experiment to run, which is basically craft a unique value proposition for your course, share it on yep. social media or in your email list and see if you get any bites. Nick Cree came back and said, well, version one didn't get any bites. Version two is getting bites. So thank you. You just saved me three months building the course I thought I was going to build. I'm like, yes, dude, my job is done, right? Like absolutely. that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Otherwise, you pour your life and 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 your heart and soul into something and then no one buys it and it can be really damaging for your confidence um yeah. hey guys just give me a quick i'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here uh just give me a quick yes in the comments if this is useful i want to see how that comes up here yeah, it doesn't really work in Streamyard when you do that so that's fine uh drop a yes in the comments and let me know if this is you there we go we're testing drop a yes in the comments and let me know if this is useful if you're enjoying this uh, it's the only way that we know that this is actually useful is if you leave a comment. If you're sitting at home going, yeah, this is great. This is amazing. We don't know. So you need to actually say yes in the comments so that we know this is useful and that you're enjoying it and that we should keep going. Otherwise, Dave and I could just start drinking beer and talking about guitars, uh, which is probably not a bad idea anyway. Um, I do want to take some questions in a moment, but first of all, I want to talk about the <clears throat> impact that course creation has had on your business, your life, your lifestyle versus doing uh, the old client services model. And again, not not to take anything away from client services, but I just would love people to get an understanding of if you make a commitment to serving your students and serving your audience and creating courses, what can that look like from a, you know, income, lifestyle, flexibility, freedom point of view? Oh, I mean, I, I just, I, I can't actually quantify how it's impacted my life, honestly. Um, it came, I'd spent many, many years doing client services, trying to be everything to to, to everyone all the time. And um, long, long story, but I, I read uh, Essentialism by Greg McKeown. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that whole point of essentialism is that you, you, you're going to make much bigger progress if you focus on one thing and put all your energy into that thing. So mm -hmm. I did. I did that. I took the chance with online courses. And um, I went from... Well, probably an income of in, in like cold hard numbers. I, mean, I can only I can only think in pounds in British pounds, but you know, honestly, between sort of thirty fifty k a year um, for quite a lot of hard work and not a great deal of satisfaction towards the end of it at all. Really, 
Mm. Um, now, in terms of actual cash, and I will say cash has never been my goal with any mm. of this. Um, you know, cash cash as, uh, you know, to, to 10 times your income or whatever, if that's your goal, absolutely go for it. But for me, my goal was was more freedom, you know, mm -hmm. so and options. So, mm. I mean, money wise, I think I could have I could have made loads more than this if I, I suppose if I'd have not made lots and lots of mistakes. But um, I probably did it. I did about thirty k. This is dollars now. <laughs> about thirty k the first year, maybe forty. Mm. Um, did about one hundred and fifty the second year. Three hundred k, I think third year and um wow. if i hadn't have taken my foot off the pedal this year it would have been about half a million wow. um, but i've taken my foot off the pedal because um for me it's the freedom and the to be able to make choices so i came to the end of a quite a long period of making courses and selling courses and doing launches and um long story but we wanted to build our own house mm. um specific kind of eco-friendly house and we want we wanted to do it for ages and it's meant a lot of upheaval we've had to sell a house we've had to find rental places and there's been there's been a lot of, a lot of change and um for me the the measure of absolute success has been that i've been able to just say i'll take a few months off mm -hmm. i'm not going to try and do anything major I'm not going to do any launches I'm probably not even going to do much in terms of free lead gen stuff. I'm going to just take my foot off the gas this summer um, and and not stress about it at all. And it's been it's been fantastic. So for me, it's it's not really about the cash. It's about how I wake up in the morning mm. and the emails that I get, if any, are from students either saying thank you for that lesson or this course or whatever, which is amazing. Um, the absolute best buzz in the world when somebody yeah. says thank you for, <laughs> for yeah. helping me and making yeah. a big difference. Um, yeah. and, and I might get some kind of like student support stuff and that's it. So just, I mean, just all, all kinds of, all kinds yeah. of benefits. My yeah. life has <clears throat> changed. And, uh, and and you you're playing more guitar and you're back in the band and you've been on the BBC and you've yes. been on the road and playing in yeah, pubs. Exactly. And, I mean our yeah. friend Mr. Our friend Mr. COVID kind of put paid to uh, yeah, some yeah. some of those band plans, but yeah, yeah, it's been nice actually playing the guitar. Yeah. I picked up the saxophone again recently as well, and um it's good. Yeah, yeah. and it's just um yeah, it's just good to have it's just good to have options. What is good as well. Is that rather than serving a small number of clients, I'm mm. able to serve hundreds and thousands yeah. of people, totally. and it's infinitely scalable. Totally love it, so, um, dude. I just want to really, I just want to thank you for sharing some of the numbers with us because that's, I, I think that's it. Actually, makes it real for some people when they look at, you know, they might be earning somewhere between, you know, fifty or a hundred thousand dollars a year as a service provider or a freelancer of some sort, um, mm. because that business model. Uh, while it has its, its 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 merits, it's just not scalable. It's really difficult to scale a client services business model unless you just mm -hmm. employ a bunch of people to manage clients. So, one of the things we talk a lot about in Mavericks Club is productizing your services into a what we call a signature system. And I see online courses as a kind of a do it yourself way to deliver your signature system. Client mm -hmm. services is the is the done for you model, which is you know has a lot of headaches. And one of my personal favorites is the group coaching model or the mastermind model, which is like the done with you. And I really like that space. And I love the online courses because they're, they're scalable. I don't do any done for you anymore because it's not scalable and um, clients usually bust your chops. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Because you know, yeah, people, yeah. people and they have needs and everyone's a unique, beautiful snowflake and everyone has their insecurities and you end up being a therapist. And yeah. so that's why I don't do client services anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with it. And I kind of, every now and then I miss doing client services until I really think about going and getting a client. I'm like, what are you doing? You idiot. Don't stop thinking about that. And I just, yeah. so I just do more group coaching. But I really appreciate you sharing the numbers because it kind of casts a vision to people of what's possible. Um, and it totally is about, it is about options and about uh, freedom and 
control really for me freedom is just an expression of control like you can't ha- you can't have freedom if you don't have control and so more money leveraged income gives you more time which then gives you more control to spend that time how you want to spend it yeah absolutely yeah definitely i think ultimately you know any amount we we've talked about this a bit already but no amount of money ultimately is going to actually keep you going you know so you've got to have you've got to you've got to have a bigger a bigger deeper goal ultimately mm. of something that, that that's driving for but it is obviously unquestionable that uh, um income revenue profit you know um is the key to a lot of options mm. definitely um now <clears throat> what what's interesting is a lot of people, and I'm just looking at some of the comments here, particularly from Deborah. Um, what's interesting is a lot of people who come to me say, um, I'm going to make a course about what I do. So I'm going to make a course teaching people how to build their own website and WordPress. Mm. And I tell them not to. <laughs> There's a couple of reasons I tell them not to. I'm like, one, what's well, kind of been done, like Dave's got that stitched up. So you're going to compete with him and he's just five years ahead of you, right? And he's really good. But two, <laughs> And it's remarkable that you've managed to do this, right? Because if you'd said to me five years ago, I think I'm going to make courses on, you know, I would have gone, don't do that. Because nobody wants to know how to use WordPress. It's just a vehicle to get them an outcome. Now, the difference is your audience were designers who were frustrated that they couldn't make their designs look like websites and they couldn't bring their websites to life because they were stuck in the WordPress thing, right? So that's Mm. the, the niche that you filled. And you already had an audience that you personally knew people that you were actually working with as a developer Mm. that you knew that they would buy it because that that was their big frustration. So how, you know, what I say to people is, uh, is, you know, think about the transformation right now in your case, being able to use WordPress was the transformation for those designers. But most people who come to me and say, I'm thinking about designing, I'm thinking about building a course to teach people how to use WordPress. I'm like, that's not the transformation people want. That might just be one step that they need to take in the overall transformation. Now, someone who's yeah. done very well out of teaching people how to use WordPress, what do you say to that, Dave? Yeah, well, I think when I first first started out, my thought was I'll teach people how to use this tool more efficiently. That was my that was just the, the thing. It's quite mm. kind of a sim, simple, naive way of looking at it. Um, when I got to know an audience which was purely by trial and error, putting myself out there, you know, sticking sticking my foot out and just just talking to them, putting content out there, listening to the questions, getting feedback. Um, I What I discovered was is that nobody wanted to know how to use WordPress, right? So that, that wasn't the thing. For me, I actually spotted something quite interesting, I suppose, in that, in that, the big frustration was is that actually people wanted to use this thing called Elementor, you know, this this page builder, and they wanted to use that page builder because a lot of them wanted to get out of, quite frankly, shitty job situations and become a freelancer and have some freedom and all kinds of issues with kind of going back to the whole status thing and feeling confident in the in the job. And um, so I actually noticed that it was this underlying lack of understanding of how work, you know, the WordPress ecosystem, I suppose, works, mm-hmm. that was the thing that was holding people back from these ultimate bigger goals. So I know my first attempt at trying to explain this and trying to sell this thing was all about the features. It was, you know, um, I'll, I'll teach you how I'll teach you how WordPress works or something along those lines, um, which is just, just like pfft. nobody wakes up in the morning, not even web designers thinking, I'd like a better understanding of the deep internal workings of WordPress. They don't give a shit. They just want to be able to fulfill these client briefs, to be able to make more money, to spend more time with a family rather than struggling. So mm-hmm. for me, now, well, let's just say no stress WordPress itself, despite all of that, is still just a technical how-to course. Mm-hmm. It's very structured for a particular outcome, but it is still very much a tech how-to course. But 
I w when I made No Fear Funnels, that was actually an attempt really to teach strategy. So actually, how can I teach how can I teach strategy where the tech happens to be a part of achieving that strategy? So mm -hmm. No Fear Funnels is probably, I don't know, 15% Elementor WordPress, if mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, it just so happens to be um to be part of that. I would say that if anybody is thinking about making tech courses, right, no matter how you position them, no matter how much you, you know, sell the benefits, sell the transformation, if you're still thinking about, yeah, but I still, I want to make a course on Google Analytics or I want to make a course on, you know, whatever it is, um, the, just you've got, you've got to accept that your course is going to be out of date, mm -hmm. right? It's <laughs> next tomorrow <laughs> that's right <laughs> and i've learned this the hard way yeah there's a few things really just really quickly one you've got to just buckle up and accept that that is life and mm -hmm. plan for it in some way even if planning is just accepting that you're going to get a few months out of this thing and that's maybe it mm -hmm. um <clears throat> accept that so as well it's the constant change of tech stuff that is actually the pain that people are willing to pay you a premium for. Mm -hmm. So in, if you want to frame it, you know, to be more positive, think about that. That is, in, in a sense, that is the, the massive pain point. It's like, oh, this stuff's all changed again. Mm -hmm. You know, give like, here's my money, show mm -hmm. me the way. So there is that. There's also, I would recommend making much shorter courses, right? Mm -hmm. So really short focus courses about one very specific aspect with a really defined outcome and, and probably some quite quick wins really mm -hmm. um but try as much as much as you possibly can to to remember that people who want to learn about tech don't want to learn about tech for the sake of it <laughs> mm -hmm. they want because they've got an outcome <clears throat> a goal in mind so you know try to teach at least some elements of timeless principles, timeless strategy, um, not just the tech stuff as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I two things now. I uh, spent two and a half thousand uh, dollars last year on a kind of all you can eat program on how to run ads on all different platforms: Facebook, YouTube, whatever. And ninety great course, really. You know, they teach fundamentals. Uh, Ninety-five percent of it is not screen sharing at all. It's like yeah. it's not in the ads manager. It's not in Google ads. It's not in the YouTube interface. It's principles. It's scripting. It's audience targeting. It's spreadsheets. It's math. It's science. It's get all that stuff right. Mm -hmm. Then, so that's that's the first thing. And the second thing is all of the videos where there is screen sharing, they are standalone videos that it's like, right, now let's dive into the Facebook ads interface and show you what you've learned, blah, blah, blah. So when yeah. the interface gets updated, they just replace that one video. All the fundamentals, 95% yep. of the course stays the same and they just replace the screen share videos, which I think is super smart. It's, it's a lean way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just just plan for it and realize up, up front, you know, as much as you might think, um, you know, whichever platform, they, they, they won't change. Mm. You know, it's you. Uh, the, the thing to remember is that with a lot of this tech stuff, a lot of it is is dependent on other things as well. So mm -hmm. even if your main, you know, platform of choice doesn't change the interface, which is highly unlikely, um, other things that are dependent on it will. You know, mm -hmm. if you were in WordPress, there's WordPress, there's the page builder, there's the plugins, there's the, there's the, oh, there's just all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A couple of questions I want to get to here. Oh, first of all, Angie Neal says, Dave, you are a legend. Angie Neal is a bloody legend. Thank you, She's Angie. You, you, you are a legend. She's already well. sold two copies of her courses this week, uh, which is uh, ridiculous. Uh, yeah. A uh, couple well of questions done. here. Sarah Davenport, who's a very good friend of my wife, and in complete transparency, is doing this challenge this week because she and my wife are putting together a training for a, a course for early career psychologists. My wife's got this great Facebook group and this podcast. She's really well known in the early career psychology space, kind of looked up to as a you know a bit of a, an influencer in that space. Sarah is a... Um, a, a supervisor in that space and an experienced psychologist and actually used to be Amy's boss. Um, and so her question is, how have you decided how to price your courses? I've got some thoughts on this, but I'd love to hear your take on this. Yeah, I, I did a bit of research into this to start off with. Um, I, I researched things like 
is there a pricing formula, for instance? You know, what what numbers do you plug into the formula to come out with the magic price? I discovered there isn't one. And <laughs> I, I was waiting and, with bacon breath there going, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, like give me a, a, a link where I can go and put that in. That can, <laughs> oh, damn, there's not one. There isn't the one. That I did. There isn't one. No, there isn't one. And um, and then also as well, I went and had a look at other courses as well. So I, for me, I had a look at other courses in the WordPress space. And to my horror, you know, they were yeah. going for kind of $20, $27, $4, $29, yeah. $67. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my, how how am I going to create a profitable business at all? Yeah. And um, ultimately, my thought was that partly it's a little bit suck it and see. It's actually charge what you think the value of your course is. Now, of course, for, uh, depends on what you're teaching. Um the, the, the pricing should depend a lot on your positioning of the value, so positioning of the ROI. So if what you're going to teach them could easily generate that student 10 times more than they paid for the course, well, yeah. you know, you, you can you can, you can can charge a really decent amount. Yeah. Um, I suppose if you're teaching something where it's more of a hobby or it's just something that you know, there's not going to be much return, then I suppose you, you can charge less. What I did was yeah. I went with a purely unscientific. I went for very low, actually, because I was scared. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be scared of pricing, but I was scared at the time. So I did like a 197 presale. That mm. went really well. I then I, the next time I launched, I think I did a 297 and then a 347 and then a 497. And so based on the principle of not going like, sky high and then having to kind of almost retreat and look like I was discounting the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I've just found that no matter how much I increase the price each time, it had no effect on sales mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm. But you probably could have launched your first course at 497 and just Oh, easily. Oh, easily. <laughs> easily. I could have done that at 497 and I could have done the next time at 997 without a doubt. And in fact, all the students, I mean, literally all of them say to me, you 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 should you should be charging as double or triple mm. uh mm. What, what what you're charging. So um yeah. I reckon it's a good formula. I reckon the 10x is a good formula, right? If you like, so for example, if you're and I mentioned this the other day on the call, if you're teaching someone how to do scrapbooking, then you're probably not gonna get 500 bucks for a scrapbooking course, right? Because there's, yeah. that, I mean, unless they're like high net worth individuals and they just have money to burn and they're bored and they want to learn how to scrapbook, that's a whole other mm. game. But there's no ROI on that, right? Well, so I pay you $97, I'll learn how to scrapbook. That's nice. I feel good about it. And it's a hundred bucks, so who cares? But yeah. if you're teaching them how to scrapbook and then how to sell their designs on Etsy and you talk about the whole marketing and how to hack Etsy and how to get featured on Etsy and how to run ads to Etsy and all that kind of stuff, well, now you can charge a thousand dollars for that course because they can easily get ten grand back over the course of a year if they take action and get it right. So absolutely. In in Sarah and my wife's case, one of the things they're talking about is one of the big things with early career psychologists is that they are they are overwhelmed and really unclear because of what they come out of out of university, they get their master's or their doctorate or whatever it is, and there's there's like eight million options in front of them, and they're not really sure what they should do, right? And they want to find a mentor or a supervisor and they want to get connected with a bunch of other people to get a support network. And so really what they're selling, I think, is clarity, confidence and support. And if you help someone get the confidence and get clear about their career path and reach out and do some networking and land a good job that's worth, I don't know, 100 grand in the salary or 150 grand in the salary or whatever, then paying mm -hmm. 500 to to $1,000 for that is a no-brainer. The, yeah, yeah. the challenge is... So my number one rule with pricing is that you have to be able to deliver what you promise at a profit. Otherwise, you're a community service, which is fine if that's what you want to do, but that's just a different conversation. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be able to deliver what you're promising at a profit. Then, once, so once you've worked out what the price is, then your job is to communicate and demonstrate the value in that offering before you reveal the price. And that's just through positioning, content, you know, I mean, my wife's got a great podcast and a Facebook group and she's super well positioned to do that already. I think there's just a fear because it's their first rodeo. They're mm. like, well, 
not really sure, you know, as you talked about, not really sure maybe we'll just go cheap to begin with, which is fine to get validation. But I just think there is, I think there is a risk if you go too cheap because you, you're you then positioned at that price point. It makes it harder to go premium later on. It so does. I think there's a few things you need to be um, conscious of. And if anyone does find that course pricing formula spreadsheet website that Dave was talking about, we'd love you to share the link. <laughs> I'll tell you, just just quickly, one thing I've found as well is that I've 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 never priced at the cheaper end. I mean, I, th I think the WordPress teaching space. I think there is maybe a bit of sort of price sensitivity in that market, or at least the the the, the used to be. Um, but I, I found, I mean, I love my audience and my students. They are grateful, super engaged, super committed. And I think one of the reasons for that, and it's only one of the reasons, is because they've paid mm -hmm. a decent amount of money for that training. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got the skin in the game. They've actually made that investment. So yeah. I'm not attracting, you know, the low ballers, the tire kickers, the, 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 the cheapos who mm -hmm. probably wouldn't put in the effort and, and get the results anyway. Um, I'd rather have fewer students paying a lot of money getting amazing results than mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who probably yeah. don't even bother looking at the videos. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is a this is a great question from Kelvin, <clears throat> and this is a really common question. <laughs> so don't do what I did, <laughs> and don't do what Dave did. So how many hours of content should a four hundred ninety seven dollar course be? It doesn't matter. The answer to this question is it doesn't matter. The answer is your, your only responsibility is if you're selling a course for $497, if you put too much content in it, you'll overwhelm them, you'll confuse them, and they won't do anything. So your yeah. number one job, first of all, your number one job as an educator is just to deliver on what you promise and realize that the vast majority, I'm talking well over 70% of the people that take your course and pay you good money will do absolutely nothing with the information that they've paid you for and the course that they've gone through. And they'll be super active and really engaged, but they've got an exercise bike in the corner and an ab roller in the cupboard and they're not losing any weight or getting fit because they're not using the thing that they've paid for. The vast majority. So just... Just know that and be okay with the fact that you're putting good work out into the world and most people who buy it won't do anything about it and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the people who do take action, your only job for them is to figure out how you can get them a result quicker, faster or better than if they were doing it on their own. That's why they're paying you. So Absolutely. I've paid, I've paid stupid amounts of money for a very, very small amount of content, which has given me a massive outcome, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, my friend Simon Bowen had a conversation with a CEO once. Simon's just a, he's, uh, that's a whole other conversation. He's a genius. He lives here in Western Australia. And he, he he's kind of in sales and marketing and messaging and communications and strategy, right? A client of his called his office and said, I need to have a conversation with Simon. <clears throat> and they said, oh, look, his calendar's fine. He's like, I, look, I desperately, I'm, I need to fire somebody and I need to have a conversation with Simon before I fire this person. So Simon, because Simon is Simon, he took the call late that day, had the call with the CEO. The call was 15 minutes, right? Simon gave the guy some frameworks. The next day gets an email from the 15 minutes. The next day gets an email from the CEO, says, send me a bill for $10,000. And Simon said, I'm not, I'm not sending you an invoice. Oh, that's nice. Thanks very much. I'm glad everything went well. He goes, no, no, send me a bill for 10 grand. He's like, no, 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 I can't send you. He goes, you just saved my company well over $100,000. Send yeah. me a bill for 10 grand. Right? Yeah. Simon sent him an invoice for 10 grand, 15 minutes work. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Nobody, nobody buying a course wants lots of content. You know, this, the, the short, and in fact, the reason that they're buying the course from you in the first place is because they want a specific result. And the faster you can get them to that specific result, the better. Correct. So. Uh, Sarah, the psychologist, also says there is good psychology research that says if people pay more, they value it more. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, hey guys, if you've got questions, we're here for just another just another three or four minutes. It's very late where Dave is in the UK. If you've got questions, please drop your questions in the comments here <laughs> before Dave nods off. And I want to get these <laughs> questions answered. Um, and remember, uh, tomorrow is the last day of the challenge here. Your challenge this week is to validate uh, your idea for your course, get some people to opt in, kill the idea quickly and move on and save yourself three months of wasted effort. Or if you like Angie Neal, uh, make some bloody sales and take some money off people because that's the ultimate validation that people want your course is if you can sell it. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so if you've got questions, leave them in the in the in the chat here. We also gave you the workbook template on Tuesday. Uh, the workbook template you can absolutely be using to. The thing I love about the workbook is if you develop a workbook, it's useful but incomplete. So it's intriguing. It's super helpful. Oh wow, this you've put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into this, but I don't really know how to fill it in. I need to ask some questions. Uh, well, of course you do, and all the answers are in my course, right? So. Um, now, Samir has got an interesting question, and Samir's been active all week. He's been on, on the calls all week. Samir says, I'm planning to run a live 21-day masterclass. I've got some thoughts on that. <laughs> Dave's like, oh, wow, <laughs> 21 days. I mean, you've seen what's happened in this five-day challenge, right? It's difficult <laughs> to keep people engaged for five days. A 21-day ma 21 masterclass I think is way too long. Um, do you suggest to pre-record it? Dave, got some thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd be interested to, to to find out where the 21 days has come from. Um, is this is this a paid thing? So it's actually kind of like a a, a paid masterclass. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose it depends on. I, I, I'd need to know a little bit more about kind of what what you're teaching and who you're teaching. And for mm. me, the kind this kind of like group masterclass thing works really well when there's a there's a live component so mm -hmm. not not knowing too much about the details Samir of what you're planning to do but for me this kind of thing would be where I would have um I would firstly I would break it up so we're not doing like a you know a consecutive 21 days because I think that would burn people out but if you can kind of break it up into like little sections so there's a few days and a break a few days and a break and maybe kick off the start of each section with something pre-recorded, which mm -hmm. gets people kind of into it and sets a scene and sets mm -hmm. tasks and gives people a quick win for that particular section. And then follow that up with live group session, group coaching, you know, that kind of accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think for that length of, of class, I think a mixture mm -hmm. uh, would work well. It's funny you mentioned that, Dave. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, it's exactly how we rolled out the client acquisition formula course in June or whenever that was. Uh, it was nice. basically a series of pre recorded videos uh, and then uh, a live group coaching at the end of it. Um, and very similar to the way that we're rolling out the course Creators Blueprint, which uh, mm -hmm. opens tomorrow and uh, starts on uh, October uh, 5. Uh, there'll be pre-recorded videos rolled out during the week and then for a certain group of people, ooh, uh, a certain group of people, they'll be they'll have access to a live call uh, once a fortnight to basically get their questions answered um, and other people can will just watch the recordings and then ask questions in the forum and get their um, answers in the forum. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think we, we used to do like, we used to do six weeks and sometimes we still do we still do the six week six week drip fed course like you know and the reason we do drip fed is because if you release like if you got 36 lessons in your course for example and you release all 36 lessons at once people binge on it and they can they like process about five percent of it they actually comprehend about five percent of it so just giving people mm -hmm. a couple of videos and then a few days to process it and think about it and come back mm -hmm. right that's really yeah, the yeah. rhythm that I'll, we try and get our students into these days yeah a um, couple of questions here. Uh, 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 yeah, Samir, there's some, yeah, Samir, you should watch what we're doing because there is some value in that for sure. Uh, Peter says, how long did your journey take? I feel impatience is often a big issue. Mm. Yeah, um, it's a big issue. Yeah, my, <clears throat> my, my journey started, I think. Oh, sorry, I, no, we, have to, I have to move on to another question, Dave. I'm done. 
<laughs> I'm just too impatient to wait for the answer. <laughs> I am. Um, well, I had the idea to leave the client work and 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 start teaching online, kind of mid 2016. Um, I researched, read, fear and procrastination for uh -huh. way too long. So I only kind of got anything up and running in February 2017, which is what, I don't know, six, seven, eight months later, uh, which is ridiculous. Uh, I did a lot of research, a lot of, you know, audience, found out all kinds of things, but didn't really get going. And um, I didn't actually sell my first course until the November of 2017. And, you know, again, lots and lots of making free stuff, Lots and lots of nurturing my list. Lots and lots of building up to the to, to running a pre-sale, and you know. So I think there's a what I would say is that the get it's a for, for me anyway. I mean, Troy might tell you different, but for me, it's a balance of getting something out there, you know, mm -hmm. getting feedback and just doing it. You know, mm -hmm. the faster you can you can get something out there and actually make a profit and start to learn from the audience, mm. the mm -hmm. better. Um, because all the procrastination and fear and research and everything else, um, you know, you might think you've delivered something, even, you know, the, the, the perfect product. You look back in a year's time at that product and think, well, that was a load of crap, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so you might as well just you know, go for it and put something mm. out there. But again, if you believe in what you're doing and you're willing to learn and actually, you know, willing to really, really, really listen to feedback and um, then, you know, patience and commitment is goes a long, long way. Yeah, I do. I'll, I'll come to Sarah's question in a second because it depends on where you're at in the journey and I'll talk about that in a moment. But also I think the thing about I say, I always say to our members and our students who when we have this conversation is, if you really, for, for me, it was, it's, if you really want to take ownership of a, a corner in the room and you want to become known as the, the people or the person or the guy or the gal that does that and turn that into a serious business that can generate multiple six or, or multiple seven figures a year, mm -hmm. I reckon it's a two year play. Like if you're not committed to going all in and serving your students and becoming that person for the next two years, then don't start because you, it's like, and this is true for anything. Like if you want to start, if you want to start eating healthy, don't think, well, I'm just going to eat healthy for a month and get into shape for summer. No, no. Eating healthy is, is a, is a way of life, right? Um, if you want to start exercising, don't think I'm just going to do it for a month and, and see if I get some results. You have to, you have to commit. And in my experience, every time I've had success in my life, I can trace it back to a, a moment in time, an absolute moment in time where I had a conversation with myself in my head and I said, this, I'm committing to this. I am doing this. I am all in. Mentally, I am all in and screw it. I am not going to quit until, uh, until, I, I, until it's obvious that I have to because I've failed or I succeed. There is just I'm not pulling out of this vein. I'm going all in. And every time I've mentally committed to that, that's when I've had success. And every time I haven't had success, it's because I'm not fully mentally committed to the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's that thing, isn't there? There's something about the universe kind of meeting you halfway. Totally. A bit woo-woo, but I, I've seen that yeah. so, so many times, that, yeah. that commitment to something. Um I think that the, the more you're committed, the more you believe that you are that person, you are that expert, and the more that you just become the yeah. expert that people turn to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, commitment is everything. Yeah. Um, Sarah's got this question, and also I'll bring up Amy, who's got the same question, not my wife, a different Amy. Can you please talk more about structure to content, live videos, timing? Yes. And also Amy Hall says this, following up with what Dana said yesterday, should we do video, live sessions, coaching sessions, workbooks, and screenshots? So here's my answer to this question, and it's an awful answer, and you're going to hate it. It depends. It depends on where you're at. Now, full transparency. Um, 
we have a, as you know, it's the worst kept secret in the history of worst kept secrets, but we have a new training rolling out that o- opens tomorrow called the Course Creators Blueprint. And tomorrow on the call, I'm actually going to go through the entire blueprint and walk you through the mind map and how it all kind of works and how it all fits together. And then I'll let you know all the details and how you can go further and work with this if you want to follow the blueprint and you want our help implementing it and, and learning how to do it. But essentially, it depends. If you are launching the, the, the one of the most successful courses or two of the most successful courses that we've ever launched, and this is basically how we do it these days, um, I hadn't recorded anything before we opened the cart. In fact, let, let me go back to 2013 when we launched the WP Elevation Blueprint. It wasn't even a course. It was a membership site. Uh, we ran a webinar. We got a bunch of people on the webinar. We sold from the webinar. Uh, there's a lot of details here I won't go into, but we once we'd sold, then I actually went to a friend's farm for two weeks and I told everyone, look, buy now. We'll open the members' website in two weeks. We had 55 people buy at $97 a month. So that was five and a half grand a month recurring that we just added to the business. I said, right, went to a friend's farm for two weeks, took the cameras, which was consisted of an iPhone and a tripod and a my little microphone thing and I made all the videos and edited all the videos and spent two weeks doing it and then put it up the members website and said, there you go. Uh, well, I just delivered what I promised, right? Rockstar Empires, which was a course that we launched in uh, 2000 and pff, I don't know, 17, I think. I literally went into a Facebook group, the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. And when it wasn't called that, it was called something else. I went into that group and I said, Hey, I've get, I've been getting asked a lot about how we produce courses and I'm going to put together a special training to teach you everything I know about creating and selling courses. I'm taking 10 students on in this first pilot program uh, do uh, first in first, you know, best dress, basically first in first serve. Um, uh, if you're in, let me know and I'll shoot you the details. whole bunch of, I think we had 45 people go, yes, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. In fact, if you trolled through this, the Digital Mavericks Facebook group, you could probably find that post somewhere. And everyone's like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. So I just pinged people privately in Messenger and went, cool, dude, here are the details. It's four training sessions over four weeks. There's nothing pre-recorded. We're going to do it live via Zoom webinar, uh, four weeks four sessions, I'll teach you everything I know, and then I'll support you over the next three months to make sure that you've got all your questions answered. Um, I'm taking the first 10 people. It's a 1000 bucks. If you're in, let me know. Yes, I'm in. Great. Here's my PayPal link. And they clicked on a PayPal link and they went and put $1,000 in my PayPal account. And it, within an afternoon, I had 10 grand in the PayPal account. Mm-hmm. I went, great, done. That's it. We're closed. And I ran those four webinars for those first four people. Mm-hmm. Then what I did is I took the recordings of those webinars and all of the questions that people asked that I kept in the chat log and I went through it and then I pulled it all out and I packaged it up into a course called Rockstar Empires. I had some case studies and testimonials from the first group that went through the pilot program. with me. I'd had all the questions and all the answers there. Uh, I just packaged that up, put together a sales page. We launched that as Rockstar Empires, did a multiple six-figure launch in our first launch and when people bought Rockstar Empires, the course, when they bought that course, week one was loaded up in the members' website. We were still shooting and editing videos for week two, three, four, five, and six as they were enrolling in the program. And in fact, as people were completing week one, we were still uploading videos for week two. So I've done that every time. Yeah. I've done that every every single course. Yeah. I've 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 sold what is gonna come, but Yeah. yeah, I've just been making it as we've been going along. Yeah. Um, the, the thing as well, just really quickly with that, is that I don't think I don't believe there is any kind of right mix of types of content or types of teaching. I think I, I would say when you first start, if you're anything like me, probably it will take all your energy and and everything um, to to just produce some videos or just whatever your particular format is. That will be all that you can manage. Yeah. What I've found is that every time I've remade a course or I've done it again or taken on new students, I've learned more. I've had, I don't know, more resources, maybe kind of new people on the team at that point. So I've been able to then add other things to the mix. It's like right now I can add a workbook and some cheat sheets and PDFs. 
couldn't even think of facing that kind of thing before. Mm. Next time I do it, now we're going to do some regular live coaching on top of that as well because now mm. I can handle that. Mm. So it's, I think it's a case of do what you can, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, if you're thinking, shit, I can't, I can't make this course, I can't sell it until I know that I can do videos and live coaching and workbooks and everything else, mm. you're never going to do it. That's right. So that's right. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm a big fan these days of developing the worksheets and the workbooks first and then just teaching them. That's kind of my methodology. But yeah, there's no way I could have done that when we first launched Rockstar Empires because I did, the reality is see, this is the other hack that I really love is the best way to produce a course that your students absolutely love and rave about is to make sure you answer every single question that those students have during the course. And the reality is you don't know what questions they have until they pay you money and start asking you questions, right? Yeah, so absolutely. building the runway as the plane takes off is the best way for them to get to the end of it and go, my God, it was like you were in my head and you answered every single question I had. And I'm like, well, of course I did because you asked me and that's what I'm here for. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, dude, this has been amazing. It's 10 past one in the morning where you are. Awesome. Um, it is. Before I let you go, I have to know, what are the guitars behind you? What are you, what's your chosen weapon these days? What have I got? I've got, um, I don't know where you can see those actually, can you? I've got a Fender. It's an American Fender Tele actually. Oh, nice. So that's, which I believe is very <laughs> much like, like the one that you've got as well. Yes. Same uh, color. Mine's, mine's a Japanese one. <laughs> Um, uh, but yep, same, very similar colors. Yeah, mine's a, mine's a posh American one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the axe that Bruce Springsteen plays. He plays an American. Yeah, one. yeah. Oh, it's great. The other one I've got there is actually a Gibson. It's a Gibson Nighthawk. It's oh, something, yeah. it's like a kind of a it's like a thinner Les Paul that they made in the nineties. Uh -huh. um, but that is brilliant. I've broke. I've snapped the neck on that thing three times. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's just. Uh, you won't be able to see it, but it's yeah, it's, a, it's an absolute beauty, yeah, yeah. actually. Beautiful, it's lovely. Beautiful. But yeah, it's got the um, probably can't see, yeah, you won't be able to see on there, but right. yeah, that's been fixed several wow. times from on stage antics. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, awesome. Hey, um. This has been so incredibly valuable and helpful, man. I really appreciate you sitting up and doing this with us late at night, and uh, I'll let you go and have a whiskey Thank now. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been yeah, awesome, cool. as always. I'm looking forward to the pandemic being over so we can travel again and hook up in real life. Yeah, we should. We should do something. Awesome. We Thank should. you, brother. Take care, and uh, I'll All see right. you on the next side. Bye. Thanks, Dave. That is Dave Foy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, uh, again, remember, uh, tomorrow we are announcing the winner of the uh, iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, right? <clears throat> and we're also going to be revealing – let me just pull up my slides here. We're also going to be revealing the entire Course Creators Blueprint and how you can use it to launch your own course. And, in fact, we'll give you all the details on your next steps and – how you can work with us to get that done. So more details there tomorrow. Remember, you've got to turn up tomorrow if you want to. If you if you want to be in the running to win that iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, you've got to turn up tomorrow. Take as much action as you can in the next twenty four hours because that iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil is still up for grabs. There are a few people, <clears throat> excuse me, who are vying for top spot, but it is still up for grabs. So take as much action as you can in the next twenty four hours, and we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Uh, and Keep the conversation going in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Any questions you've got, let us know. And uh, and also feel free to share this with anyone who you think might be interested. Just uh, go to our Facebook page is probably the best place to share it. It's uh, facebook.com slash WP Elevation. All right, gang, loving your work. It's been so much fun being a part of this challenge. Tomorrow, I'm going to re reveal the entire blueprint, all the bits and pieces that you need to create and launch your first or your next course in a super lean way that will get you some traction, get you some results without the overwhelm and without wasting how much time building something that people don't want. So uh, come and hang out with that and I'll see you again. Have a great day wherever you are. Stay safe, uh, hug your family and don't touch your friends. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.